Welcome back. You are watching Beyond World is One with me, Raisha Seigal, and this is Speed News. We'll get you latest from all across the globe. Let's get you started. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump tapped Republican Brendan Carr to lead the Federal Communications Commission. In a statement, Trump called him a warrior for free speech. Carr has fought against the regulatory lawfare that has stifled Americans' freedoms and will end the regulatory onslaught that has been crippling America's job creators and innovators and ensure that the FCC delivers for rural America. U.S. Ambassador to Australia, Caroline Kennedy, has slammed her cousin Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s views calling vaccines dangerous. Kennedy said her cousin, who has spread vaccine misinformation, has views at odds with most Americans, including the Kennedy clan. Her statement comes days after Donald Trump picked the anti-vaccine activist to be the next U.S. Health Secretary. In the major change to Washington's policy in the Ukraine-Russia war, U.S. President Joe Biden's administration will allow Ukraine to use U.S.-provided weapons to strike deep into Russian territory. Sources say Ukraine plans to conduct its first long-range attacks in the coming days. The move by the United States two months before President-elect Trump takes office on January 20th comes after months of requests by the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to allow Ukraine's military to use U.S. weapons to hit Russian military targets far from its border. Ten people, including two children, were killed and 52 others were injured when a Russian missile hit a residential nine-story building in Ukraine's northeastern region of Sumy. Firefighters battled a blaze, consuming cars, and rescuers carried people out of the building. The multi-story residential building was also seen with windows blown out and facade damaged. The attack on Sumy followed a morning of Russia pounding Ukraine's power grid in what Kiev said was a massive attack with 120 missiles and 90 drones that killed at least seven people. Authorities say three people were injured aboard a single engine plane that crashed near a Southern California drag strip where fans were gathered for the finals of the racing event. The Federal Aviation Administration says at least two parked vehicles on the ground were struck when the Piper PA-32 crashed near the drag strip in Pomona, east of Los Angeles. Four people were on plane and nobody on the ground was hurt. The raceway is hosting the NHRA finals that began on Thursday. Races were paused on Sunday as emergency crew responded to the event. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with the Philippine Secretary of National Defense Gilbert Tidoro in Manila. The two defense chiefs signed an agreement that concerned security measures for the protection of classified military personnel. It also serves as a framework to help with the exchange of classified information between the Philippines and the United States of America. Hong Kong pro-democracy tycoon Jimmy Lai is set to testify in court when the high-profile national security trial resumes on Wednesday. 
lies facing two counts of conspiracy to collude with foreign forces, including calling for sanctions against Hong Kong and Chinese officials under a China-imposed national security law. Lai, the founder of the now-shuttered pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily, is also charged with conspiracy to publish seditious publications under a colonial-era sedition law. Both the US and Britain have called for Lai's immediate release, asserting that the trial is politically motivated. However, Hong Kong authorities dispute the claims. Indigenous lawmaker Lydia Thorpe has been censored by the Australia's parliament for heckling King Charles during his October visit to Canberra. The censor motion condemned Thorpe's actions as disruptive and disrespectful. The motion was passed by the Senate with 46 votes in favour and 12 against it. Speaking to the media, Lydia Thorpe said that she was disappointed with the motion against her, adding that she would do it again if the monarch returned. Famed Australian broadcaster and former Wallabies coach Alan Johns has been charged with a string of alleged historical sex crimes after police carried out an investigation into the conservative radio shock jock. The 83-year-old is a household name across Australia and for years held immense sway through his top-rating radio talk show. Detectives from a dedicated child abuse squad arrested Jones on Monday while executing a search warrant at his luxury Sydney Harbour apartment. He has been charged with 24 offences against eight alleged victims spanning between 2001 and 2019. India's weather agency issues orange alert for dense to very dense fog in Delhi as national capital enters stage 4 of restrictions under graded response action plan against pollution. Air quality level has worsened to over 450 in several parts of the national capital with air quality staying in the severe category for the last five days. Delhi Chief Minister Atishi announced that physical classes will be discontinued for all students. Joe Biden has become the first sitting U.S. president to visit the Amazon rainforest, flagging the dangers of global warming. Biden toured aboard his Marine One presidential helicopter, viewing the confluence of the Amazon and Rio Negro rivers at Manaus spots where water levels have dropped sharply due to the worst drought in decades. He also went to the Museum of the Amazon in Manaus, where he met with indigenous leaders who want to protect the rainforest. I'm proud to become the first sitting American president to visit the Amazon to proclaim the first International Conservation Day, reflecting all that it takes as a state in the fight against climate change. Elon Musk Starlink is making waves in India with its promise of high-speed satellite internet, especially for remote and underserved regions. However, a report has flagged certain security concerns regarding the U.S.-based service. The report highlights Starlink's links to U.S. intelligence and the military, raising fears of surveillance, data interception and potential threats to India's critical infrastructure. The report has additionally underscored the dual-use nature of the technology, which serves both civilian and military purposes, as a key national security risk for India.
A 25-year-old woman from the Indian state of Karnataka lost nearly $2,300 after falling victim to an online scam linked to a fake job ad. While searching for part-time work, she came across an Instagram post offering an Amazon Freshers job in India. Clicking the link led her to a WhatsApp group where individuals promised high returns for completing online tasks. When she attempted to withdraw her earnings, her efforts failed and the scammers cut off all contact. Realizing she had been duped, she filed a complaint with the Indian Cybercrime Police. UK telecom giant Virgin Media O2 has introduced Daisy, an AI chatbot that is designed to tackle scammers by engaging them in lengthy conversations. Acting as an elderly individual, Daisy keeps scammers occupied, preventing them from reaching real victims. Unlike human scam baiters, Daisy operates round the clock, never divulging details like bank or credit card information. Daisy has already consumed hundreds of hours of fraudsters' time. Though not a complete solution to scams, Daisy is a step forward in using AI to combat online fraud and may inspire similar innovations in the fight against cybercrime. Asian shares turns higher, following a rally in tech heavyweight Samsung and gains in Chinese stocks and fresh signs of policy support. A key gauge of the region's equities rose 0.2%, aided by Samsung Electronics jump after South Korea's biggest firm announced a surprise stock buyback plan. Shares in Hong Kong and mainland China also advanced after the country's securities regulator. It urged listed companies to strengthen returns on their stocks. The brighter mood in Korea and China helped to offset weakness in neighboring markets like Japan and Taiwan. Concerns linger about Trump's potentially inflationary economic policies and Friday's upbeat data that reduced expectations for the Federal Reserve to cut its rates. Wall Street brokerages have turned more cautious on Chinese stocks as persistent deflationary pressures and geopolitical tensions cloud the outlook for earnings in the world's second largest equity market. Morgan Stanley strategist reduced China's equities to a slight underweight within the region, while Goldman Sachs trimmed its index target to reflect a less favorable macro backdrop. The latest calls represent a rapid turnaround from the upbeat stance in the market following Beijing's stimulus blitz in September. The MSCI China index has fallen about 15% from a recent peak as excitement over the prospect of more government support fizzles and Trump's victory in the US election raises concerns over high tariffs on China. Oil holds a weekly decline on concerns over plentiful supply and the outlook for demand in China. The world's biggest crude importer, Brent, traded below $71 a barrel after falling 3.8% last week. Weak Chinese consumption has impacted sales of crude for December, while forecasters, including the energy agency, sees the prospect for a sizable supply glut next year and losses since mid-October. Hostilities in West Asia have raised fears of an escalation and potential disruption to supplies. A stronger dollar has also weighed in prices recently, making commodities priced in the currency more expensive. Gold advances after suffering its worst weekly drop since 2021. This comes as US dollar eased and traders weighed the outlook for Federal Reserve rate cuts given Donald Trump's return to the White House. 
Bullion rose more than 1% following a loss of more than 4% last week, while Trump's win has clouded the outlook for uh, rate reductions next year, given the potential for his policies to be inflationary. About half of the traders swapped expect there will be probably a cut by next month. Meanwhile, an additional lift came from Goldman Sachs Group, which asserted a forecast for prices to rally to $3,000 an ounce next year. Experts are advising investors to go for gold.